What's up YouTube? So we got this 2002 C5 Corvette we're going to be working on. This is getting a whole slew of parts. We got a big order that just came in so just going through and taking inventory. So as you can tell by the parts here we're going to have a good week. Um, right here is an Edelbrock E-Force supercharger kit. This kit actually belongs on a C6 Corvette. Um, however we are going to be retrofitting it onto this O2 vet using a Lingenfelter E-Force install kit. So uh, right off the bat, we've got a Edelbrock supercharger. Um, this one is actually their tuner kit. Doesn't come with a pulley on the front end. We ended up getting a 3.875 inch pulley to keep our boost levels in check. Uh, doesn't come with injectors. Uh, so we ended up getting some 60 pound D-Twerk injectors. These are an LS2 style. However, they have the adapter plugs included with them. So we will be able to run those in the fuel rails that they come with, really nice billet fuel rails. Um, it also comes with some fuel lines going to the supercharger itself. So we're going to try to utilize all this to run it to our factory fuel setup. With this kit, we've also got the heat exchanger, the air filter, cold air intake. Um, it actually came with a card style math. Um, we've got a harness adapter to go along with that. So the kit comes with the LS2 style overflow bottle, which we have right here. We are not going to be using this because it will not fit the car properly. Um, instead, we've actually got a uh, new tank that came with the E-Force install kit. So we're going to be using this. Um, we do have to use the um, coolant pump, which comes with the E-Force unit, as well as a couple of miscellaneous brackets. Um, we've also, with the Edelbrock kit, we've got thicker shims to space our cradle down to give us a little bit more hood clearance. Um, on the front end of the car, we're going to need to gain a little clearance with the water pump. That's why we're using an LS3 unit, has a smaller pulley on it. We are going to be using an LS2 throttle body. So we've got a Casper's adapter harness to go into that. Um, we also are going to be upgrading the power steering bracket to this 2004 unit. Um, this doesn't have the window like the earlier ones did. Those were prone to cracking off right here. Um, this is when you add like a supercharger with high belt tension. Uh, with the kit, we played our numbers right. We should be good with this size belt. It's a 406115 from Continental. Um, we've got a bunch of miscellaneous harness adapters. We've got, um, you know, math adapters, all kinds of stuff. With this kit, we also have the oil pressure relocation, um, which actually spaces it off the back. Because if you notice with this uh, valley plate, this is actually an LS2 style plate. So we will not be using it. However, we will be mimicking the countersunk screw holes here with the factory plate. Uh, since it has central knock sensors, uh, we're not gonna be able to use this one. So we're gonna cut a gouge in the center of it to run the wiring, because this is a very tight fit against this valley plate. So uh, once that's all done, we've got an ATI performance dampener to go on stock size. So that won't be changing the boost. We got an ARP bolt. Um, have you noticed in the past, you know, where these sometimes are hard to get, so uh, make sure that's in your in your inventory. We're going to be changing out this uh, clutch because it's not going to hold up to the power that this unit's going to put out. So we've got a spec stage three plus clutch. I run the same clutch in my Camaro and I love it. Light pedal feel. It's a single disc clutch, so it has nice grab characteristics. It's supposed to hold up to like 800 foot pounds. I ran this in my old Camaro, spraying nitrous, never had an issue. We've got a Racetronics hot wire kit. This runs alternator voltage straight back to the pump, which we will be upgrading to an AEM uh, race pump. Now, we can't go too crazy on the fuel pump because the stock filter regulator will just throw a fit if we just end up throwing too much fuel at it. So if this ends up not being enough fuel, we're going to end up going with a Walbro 450 and changing out the filter regulator for just a straight filter and then running a manual uh, fuel pressure regulator under the hood but we'll cross that road when we get to it. Let's see, and lastly, we're gonna be upgrading the exhaust to get this thing free flowing. You know, superchargers, they love free flowing exhaust. So we've got a set of one and seven eighths um, headers from Cooks. Very nice units, all stainless steel, very beautiful. Uh, these are works of art. Uh, we've got a catted X pipe, so we're gonna maintain emissions compliance with this. We've got a 160 degree thermostat to go in it to keep her cool and um, yeah, that should be it. You know, we're going to retrofit this uh, heat exchanger that was specifically for the LS2. That'll pretty much be it for now. Um, you know, we'll start tearing this thing apart. I think the first thing I'm going to do is end up dropping the clutch and changing all that out and then going back from there, uh, you know, finishing up with the fuel pump and then going on the front end with the steering rack, installing the ATI balancer, 
take it off the water pump, the accessory bracket, swap everything out, and then uh, pop that supercharger on there and see where we're at as far as uh, height measurements. Looking forward to it and uh, definitely don't want to miss this, so definitely subscribe. Stay tuned, you know, if you like the video, drop a like. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back at it with some more on this supercharged C5 using an LS2 E-Force supercharger. It's going to be a beast.